Good evening. A royal commission has been launched into Victoria's biggest ever legal scandal. It's been revealed a gangland lawyer was working as a police informant, tainting evidence used in more than 600 cases, including some of Melbourne's most notorious underworld crimes. They were the underworld gangsters who ruled Melbourne's streets, a time of bloodshed which saw police scramble to make arrests and their lawyers struggle to set them free. But today came the biggest bombshell. A lawyer who represented some of the biggest crime bosses was also a police informant. And now those clients are being told after the High Court rejected a police bid to keep the deception secret. It's an outrageous outrageous undermining of the judicial system uh, like we've certainly never seen in, in Victoria and I suspect never really seen around the world. The fallout is unprecedented. The lawyer turned supergrass is only identified as informer 3838. She passed on client secrets to Victoria Police from 2005 to 2009. Because of that, 631 cases involving 20 people are now tainted. They include the jailing of drug kingpin Tony Mockbell, mafia boss Pat Barbaro for the largest seizure of ecstasy in the world, and Farik Orman over the murder of Victoria. De Pierce. The informant's information directly resulted in more than 300 arrests and the seizure of property and assets valued at over $60 million. This is going to have enormous ramifications for the judicial system with so many people uh, coming forward and saying they want out of jail. Uh, I, someone's got to be held to account and I'd say heads will roll. Four years ago, the lawyer told police of her fears her deception could have been exposed. It is an understatement to say that an extremely dangerous Italian organised crime family has learned this type of detail is nothing short of horrifying. The lawyer said if her identity was ever revealed, she would be killed by a bullet to the head. She told her police handlers to say nice things at her eulogy, adding, enjoy the Royal Commission. But why did a prominent lawyer with a young family risk such dangerous deception? She says she was fed up her clients were escaping justice. I watched as police either totally failed to investigate much of this offending or failed in being able to obtain evidence to be able to arrest and charge offenders. Despite the High Court savaging the police for using the tainted informer, the Commissioner is standing by his men. Melbourne was in the grip of what now what is widely known as the gangland wars. It was accordingly a desperate and dangerous time and a genuine sense of urgency was enveloping the criminal justice system, including police. Those criminals convicted on the tainted evidence could now appeal their convictions, have their sentences reduced or walk free. Live now to Chanel Vella. Chanel, this informant's life must now be in real danger. Well, Mitch, this lawyer has always lived in fear, but now with those letters in the hands of these criminals, you can only imagine how terrified she must be. Now, Police Chief Commissioner Graham Ashton said they have always tried to keep this information secret out of fears that she could be murdered, but the High Court decided otherwise. They said the integrity of the criminal justice system outweighed her personal interests and the risks that crime bosses could walk free. Mitch. Thanks, Chanel. The scandal has plunged the newly re-elected Andrews government straight into crisis mode. The Premier promised to restore the public's faith in our justice system. It was supposed to be a public relations victory, the first meeting of the new Cabinet, with a record half the members female. But instead, Cabinet was hit with the harsh reality of a legal bombshell and the need to order a Royal Commission. How on earth did it happen? And what do we have to do to make sure that it can never happen again? The Premier clearly angered at the police use of an informant whose evidence may have tainted countless cases. You're probably getting a sense I'm not particularly impressed to have to deal with these issues. For years, Victoria Police had fought the Office of Public Prosecutions in court to stop it telling criminals their cases may be open to challenge. We think that a Royal Commission, given there is the prospect of some uh, very well-known individuals walking free, we think it's appropriate to have this highest and most formal type of inquiry. 
The Commission will look at how many cases are tainted and the prospect of paying millions of dollars compensation, even though the independent broad-based anti-corruption commission has already investigated the use of informants. I think it's important the Royal Commission give that public assurance and look at these issues in a more public way to ensure, to give all of us confidence that these systems are now different. The Royal Commission will cost $7.5 million, the interim report, to be tabled in State Parliament by July next year, the final report by December. But the appeals and compensation claims could drag on for years and the Premier warned what the Royal Commission won't be. Not a ticket to walk with a compensation check. Brendan Donoghue, Seven News. Good evening. Some of Victoria's most notorious criminals could go free or have their sentences slashed following revelations a gangland lawyer was a secret police informant. A royal commission has been announced into the systematic misuse of the supergrass slammed by the High Court as reprehensible. Mark Santamartino reports. Australia's most notorious drug trafficker now with a question mark over his conviction after revelations one of his legal team was feeding information to police. How many cases, how many convictions are unsafe? How many convictions, the integrity of which can be called into question because of the way this informant was uh, managed? News of another Royal Commission overshadowing Premier Andrew's first meeting with his new cabinet this afternoon. This could cost the public hundreds of millions of dollars and put bad people out on the streets. What worse could happen? Tony Mockbell is one of at least 20 convicted criminals told by the Department of Public Prosecutions that a legal practitioner was providing information to Victoria Police about you in possible breach of legal professional privilege. A tactic slammed by the High Court for debasing fundamental premises of the criminal justice system. I'd say it's unprecedented on this scale at least uh, around the world. Lawyer X, also known as Informant 3838, approached police to become an official source in September 2005. Over three years and four months, she made around 5,500 information reports using detail obtained under legal privilege. Information that helped police make the world's largest ever ecstasy bust and put away hundreds of criminals at the height of Melbourne's gangland wars. It was accordingly a desperate and dangerous time. I believe the officers, both current and veteran who managed the informer and worked on these investigations acted in good faith. In 2014, Victoria's Anti-Corruption Commission launched an inquiry and in 2016, the DPP decided it must notify all the lawyers' clients. Action Chief Commissioner Graham Ashton has spent two years and millions of dollars fighting to stop until losing a final appeal in the High Court last month. Our absolute concern has been for the protection of the lawyer and their family, who Victoria Police believed would be murdered if this information was released. So I make no apologies for taking the legal actions that Victoria Police has taken in this matter. Premier Andrews now bracing for a wave of compensation calls. We're doing this properly because it needs to be done in such a way those people uh, get the punishment that they richly deserve, not a ticket to walk with a compensation check. There'll be conversations being had all around, uh, on the prison phones all around Victoria, I suspect, with uh, criminal lawyers, uh, with criminals uh, in jail asking, can we get out? Mark joins us live now. Mark, what happens from here? Well, not one, but two Royal Commissioners could actually be selected for this one in the coming weeks, Tony, with hearings to start in earnest early next year. Priority one will be working out just how many cases are compromised. The Premier is promising we'll have a concrete number on that by July 1st, but there's been no word as to whether witness testimonies would be heard publicly or hidden behind closed doors to protect the uh, reputation and the identity of other police informants. As for the woman at the centre of this all, Lawyer X, she is being urged to go into witness protection for the safety of her children. Tony?